I didn't catch this one, but I'm just going to glance over real, like a glancing blow. And then I'm going to ask you about the undercard Kazakh style stopped Rab, Rob Brandt. Uh, I can't, I struggle with this guy. Jenna Beek, Alamaco. I saw some of that say. fight. Hey. Yeah, what I saw, uh, Brent was not looking good. Like his, his balance was off and I didn't see the finish, but I saw up until about three rounds before then him in retreat, getting battered on the rope. So I did tweet out, like, I don't expect him to see the final bell. So I'm glad the corner stopped it. It felt, let's speak of, you're a horror film fan. I'm a horror, I like horror film. It felt like a horror film. Right. It felt like yeah. you kind of said, don't don't. Oh, God, don't go there. But, you know, they're going there. And that's what makes you draw into a horror film. Right. You're like, don't go where mm-hmm. the, the monsters don't go in the woods. That's where the monster has the superpowers. And then they're going. You're like, oh, God, but I want to watch. And this this Rob Brant suing a form of his promoter right now, Greg Cohen and someone else. It mm-hmm. felt like it was the camp from hell. Body language, Dr. Lukey at the way in. He looked more amped up. Rob's normally a mellow guy. He looked more intense. I don't want to discredit Jenna Beck's win because this is a big win. And this guy was a great amateur and he's looking for a big fight. But this also felt like when Chris Algieri lost to Earl Spence. And it was so clear, like he's suing his promoter. This was like a fight he was taking for some reason to either pay for the legal. There was like a reason for taking the fight beyond taking the fight. And that Algeria has never, Chris Algeria has never looked as bad as he did against Errol Spence. And it, I think that there's not a coincidence that it also occurred when he was su- in a lawsuit. So to me, not to discredit it, I think that we do need to put into context, Rob Brandt is suing his promoter and he looked really weird in this fight. Right, that does matter. You know, out of the ring stuff does matter. I mean, you're going, it's a war and it's life and death when you step in the ring. You know, you have to be 100% focused. And this is why when you look at uh, Andre Ward's situation, a lot of us were frustrated that he literally just stayed out of the ring for two and three years to resolve this contract situation. But this is a good case why you see that that's necessary. You can't have any distractions like that if you're going in the ring fighting for your life, which you are. You know, you have to be no distractions. No, because, you know, when you're in a lawsuit, that's something new every day, especially if it's a contentious one. Your lawyer's calling you for more information, for more documents. You might have to go make statements. You can't be doing all that stuff while you're in camp. You know, it's going to mess with you mentally. You know, if you go to you go to a deposition and then you hear from your lawyer, you might have to fork up 25% of your purse to make this go away. How do you think you're going to train that day? You're not going to be in the best mood. You're not going to be focused. Your road work is going to suffer. Your sparring is going to suffer. So absolutely, there's nothing wrong with bringing that up in context. You know, part of being a great fighter is being able to tune all that out. But I don't see how anybody can tune out something like that when you're being sued or going through a lawsuit. Undercard hits. I saw Angel Hernandez, the kind of like one of my favorite gate men, gateway, gatekeeper. I almost said gateway or gate men. Uh, a guy at the gate. We'll just call him a guy at the gate. Angel Hernandez, right. really tough guy. He's fought a lot of prospects on the comeback. He took. Andreas Gutierrez to a draw. I'm going to assume he probably had a little bit more success in that fight. I didn't see it. Anything stand out to you on this undercard that we did not, the general public, get to see, that, or even the undercard that we didn't touch on? So that was the main one that stood out to me because that was a very hard fight, very bruising. Both guys marked up. Uh, Gutierrez was getting hit with some heavy shots. You know, basically Hernandez kept coming. Um, didn't fight off the back foot was able to take his punches very well. And that's what put Gutierrez in so much of a uh, problem situation. He couldn't get Hernandez off of him, you know, as far as gaining any type of respect. So it was really a back and forth fight. And they were both landing bombs on each other. There was not a lot of separation. So I was comfortable with either guy winning by a point or two, but I felt like the draw was the best result because, you know, they were really just fighting tooth and nail the whole time. It was a very rough eight, for like, you know, eight rounds. You know, I think... Honestly, if it would have went 10 rounds, I probably would lean towards um, Hernandez. Hernandez pulling up the upset because he was landing a harder punches in those last couple of rounds. When they were having exchanges, actually, these weren't single shots. You know, when they were standing toe-to-toe and throwing, Hernandez was getting the better of it, which surprised me. So he had all the momentum in the last couple of rounds. So if I was Gutierrez, I would count myself as lucky. I really doubt he's going to be looking Hernandez's way, you know, as far as his next bout. Well, he fought a guy I know named Andy Vences. And the thing I'll always remember about that fight is 
Angel Hernandez has this uncanny ability where you start out and you think you can knock him out. And then all of a sudden you're a little bit tired and he's just in your face throwing like 50 punches and they're not all hard, but they're all kind of landing on parts of your body, the shoulder, the side. And he just takes people into chaos. He's kind of like,